How are we doing everyone? Today you join me on the bank and it's the middle of November so we're starting to get into winter time and I'm going to share with you guys one of my favourite winter tips for nicking a bite and that is a tactic that's gone out of fashion in recent years but like I say it can be absolutely lethal and that is the good old flatbed method feeder. Now a lot of people when it gets to the winter time they start switching over to using solid bags or little mesh bags but the method feeder has got a few um, features that allow it to be, in my opinion, even more effective. And that is that you can pack it with ground bait. Now the ground bait breaks down and disperses quickly, puts loads of attraction inside your peg, but doesn't leave much food source. And as we know in the winter time, the fish's metabolism slows down. They're not looking to feed as much. They don't want as much food source, but what you're looking to do is get attraction there so that they come over to your rig, investigate it, and then get hooked. And the way that I fish these method feeders is I've got a very short rig there with a super, super sharp size six hook, a little 12 mil code white pop up there that sits just wafting around next to the feeder and any fish that comes in to investigate the ground bait that's on that feeder, this just flies up into their mouth and nails it every time. Now, like I said before, the reason I like that is that I can explore the swim. I can cast it all around the swim until I find where those fish are sat up in the winter time, rather than casting, say, a solid bag that's filled up with pellet and then dropping what is the equivalent of a handful of pellet all around my swim. With the method feeder, I can explore with that ground bait and within half an hour, it's dispersed into the swim. I can wind it in and then go and explore elsewhere. So it really is a great tactic for nicking those bites, exploring the swim and finding the fish at this time of year. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I mix up my favourite ground bait mix to go onto the method feeders. And I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about how I set the bobbins up and how I fish a method feeder in the swim. Okay, so the products that I use for making my preferred method feeder mix is a selection of different sized trigger ice pellets, the trigger ice bag mix, so that's a nice fine bag mix there. And I do also like to add in some green lip muscle extract as well, the powder form there. Uh, so that's the three main ingredients that I use. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how I mix it together. Cause like any good matchman knows, it's not just a case of what ground baits you use and the ingredients you use, it's how you mix it. That's a really important thing for feeder fishing. So I'm gonna show you that right now. So what I'm gonna do to start with is I'm actually gonna get a selection of pellets. Now these ones here, this is my, my bag mix. It's also my method bag, uh, my method feeder mix as well. And it's made up of two mil, four mil, and also some eight mil pellets in there. So different size pellets. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put that into a bucket to coat the bottom of the bucket. And now I think this is quite an important phase of the, the mixing up, is that I use hot water, boiling water, to actually put over the pellets to start with. And that starts the breakdown process. So what that does is it starts to scald the pellets. Now, once pellets get scalded, they start to ooze out all those oils and flavors and attractions, which is exactly what we want our method mix to be doing. So I'm just gonna mix that in there, like so. And you wanna have it so that the water just about coats the pellet that you've got inside your bucket there. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more pellet into that. Give that a good mix up. And then what I tend to do is I'm gonna leave this for around about five minutes until the next stage of my method ground bait making process. So we're gonna leave it at five minutes, we'll come back in just a second. Okay, so that's been about five minutes now and those pellets have soaked in all of the water and they're now nice and mushy. And now we need to add the main ingredient which is the trigger ice bag mix. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna sprinkle it in over the top onto the pellets. And I'm also gonna add, I absolutely love this, the green lip mussel powder to it. You gotta watch out when you open the lid because it does plume up at quite a bit, but I'm just gonna give it a good sprinkle over the top as well. There's something about this that carp find irresistible. Now once it's in there, I'm gonna give it a good mix up. So I'm gonna mix this all the way through. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get as much air inside the ground bait as I can. What I don't wanna do is I don't want it to just form into a great big lump. I want to get as much air in there as I can so that when it sits on the feeder, once it hits the water, it starts to activate and starts to break down in the swim. And already the smell that's coming from this bucket, it's absolutely, irresistible to a carp. You've got that green lip muscle, you've got the trigger ice, 
You've got the bits of pellet that's inside there as well. Remember, those pellets are already softened as well. It's not like hard pellet that's going out there. Again, if you speak to someone that sits on a seat box in the winter time, they're not fishing hard pellet on the hook. They're fishing their soft hookers, and that's in effect what we're doing. We're putting out a bait which is extremely digestible and water soluble into the water. Right, so that is looking really, really good. I'm trying to fluff up the mix as much as I can. Maybe another handful of the trigger ice bag mix into there. Getting that into there, that looks lovely. Making sure you get into the corners as well. And then the last bit that I like to do is actually get my hands in there and pick it up, put it together and actually just give it a sort of crush through my fingers like this. So that again, I'm breaking up any of those larger particles of the bag mix inside there. There we go, that's looking fantastic. Okay, right, so the mix is now ready to load onto the feeder and I'll show you how we do that. So I'm gonna take the hook bait with the shot on there. Remember, that's just critically balanced, so it just sits up over the top of the feeder once it breaks down. And I lay the hook bait into the bottom of the mold and you sprinkle on top the mix and just give it a very, very gentle pat down. You're not trying to squeeze it in there, you just give it a little gentle pat down. And then put your feeder on top and that's when you need to give it a good solid push in. So you give it a good solid push into the mold, really push it in there tight. And then with these molds, they've got a little button on the back side that you press the button and then it should release out the feeder from the front side. So there you go, it's released out. And you can see there that your bait is actually sitting on the top of your feeder. And when that hits the water and starts to break down, that bait will be like released from the feeder. So it'll actually kick away from the feeder. And when the carp come in and they start hitting into the feeder, start trying to get that food, the first item that's gonna come away from that feeder is actually gonna be your hook bait. So it's a, you know, they, they sort of like picking it like the, like the cherry on top of a baked world tart is the way I like to think of it. But that is now ready. That will cast an absolute mile. It's really aerodynamic, streamlined, weighs probably around about three and a half ounces. So, you know, any decent rod that's got a sort of three pound plus rating will be able to cast these. Um, yeah, and they fly real nice and straight. So we're gonna get that out into the lake and uh, I'll show you how I set the bobbins up and how I sort of, uh, yeah, set the alarms up for fishing with method feeders. So the final thing to talk about when it comes to fishing method feeders is just how I go about setting up the bobbins when I'm fishing with a method. So you can see my right hand rod is a tight line. I'm just fishing it out there with a the Ronnie out on the spot. So it's nice and tight. My left hand rod is down the margin, that's on a slack line. But when you're fishing a method feeder, what I suggest you do is fish your bobbins so that you've got a drop. So you don't want it too tight up to the blank of the rod. You don't want it super slack as well. You want to have it so you've got a bit of movement so that the actual bobbin can come up and down. And the reason for that is that you've got to remember you've got a lot of food that's actually sitting on your lead itself. And what will happen is, is that those carp will come on in and they start hitting into your lead. So don't be surprised if you're method feeder fishing, if you start to see a little bit of bleeping and up and down movements, very similar to a liner going on, don't hit those, wait for a good solid take or a good drop back because it will be those fish hitting into your feeder and then you wanna wait for the, the hook bait to be released from the feeder and that's when you get those pickups. So yeah, nice little drop, around about six inches or so and just wait for a decent take and that should give you some tips to put some more fish on the bank this winter.